had a real beauty in the eye of the beholder moment last week when Capri Holdings, the company formerly known as Michael Kors, which also owns Jimmy Choo and Versace, held its analyst day last Tuesday. We got some insanely disparate reactions from the analyst community. Some loved it, some hated it. They were definitely stop, not stop, on the stop, same stop, page. Stop, 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 stop. Now, I'm always thrilled when we get this kind of dueling situation among the analysts because you can pit their arguments against each other and then we'll become a better investor. You become a, have a better understanding of both the company and the stock. So let's go over why Capri Holdings got such varied reactions after its analyst meeting. It's a lesson in context, and it's a teaching moment. But most importantly, it's one of the brands everybody knows. So let's figure out whether it's any good or not. The first thing you need to understand is that this stock is a... The House of Pain. That's right. Last summer, Capri peaked in the mid-70s. Now it's at $33 and change. That's not a two-for-one split. When the company last reported at the end of May, the actual results were pretty strong. But the guidance for the next quarter was downright putrid, and the stock, it got annihilated. The problem for Capri Holdings, in a nutshell, is that Wall Street no longer is willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. When the old Michael Kors snapped up Jimmy Choo in 2017, moving into the luxury footwear space, investors cheered and the stock surged higher. But when the new Capri Holdings announced it would be buying for Versace last summer for a pretty penny. The stock pretty much peaked. It plunged from 72 to 66 of the news. And you know, it hasn't seen those levels again. Why so much skepticism here? In part, it's because Capri is moving too rapidly for some people. They decided to acquire Versace less than a year after the Jimmy Choo deal. At the same time, they paid a fortune for Versace, and many investors worried that the deal didn't make sense even at a lower price. Now, at the same time, Capri had terrible timing. They announced the Versace deal right before the economy peaked and the stock market broke down in the fourth quarter. Since then, the stock has just been outright obliterated. It's the point where it's actually become absurdly cheap, if you ask me. Right now, Capri forecasts it will earn $4.95 per share in 2020 fiscal year. That means the stock is selling for less than seven times earnings. Well, that's like steel mill-like. And whenever you see something trading at such a low level, you have to think something. You have to assume that Wall Street doesn't believe that they can make the numbers. It's the only justification for that low price earnings multiple. Investors are worried that Capri Holdings might turn out to be what we call a value trap. They think the guidance may be too optimistic and the numbers might need to come down further. However, when you actually look at the recent results, Capri has beaten Wall Street's earnings estimates in eight of the last eight quarters. Even when their sales are weaker than expected, the earnings are solid. But whether it's from the Versace deal or the challenges faced by the old Michael Kors brand or general disdain for the accessories category, think Apple Watch against them, the stock hasn't been able to attract many adherents. While Capri had some ambitious long-term targets, they were talking about $8 billion in total sales, up from just over $5 billion in the latest fiscal year, there was very little clarity on how the company would actually get there. Even if you believe management's forecast, there was no roadmap for where it had to go. That's the context you need to keep in mind going into last week's analyst meeting. And it's, it's why people uh, had such polarized reactions. Capri CEO John Idle, who's very, very, I'd say, astute observer of the fashion world, finally gave us some clarity. He gave us the roadmap, but not everybody liked his plan. He gave specific targets for each of his three brands. He explained how they get there. Putting it all together, the company believes it can deliver mid-single-digit revenue growth next year and the year after with stabilizing operating margins and double-digit earnings growth. Now, if Capri can hit those numbers, then the stock is a total steal right here. Less than seven times earnings for a company with double-digit growth? That doesn't make sense. That's an incredible bargain, people. On the other hand, if Capri can hit those numbers, well, there's a lot less to like, so it all hinges on whether or not to buy what management is selling. And I'm not talking about the merchandise. I'm talking about the estimates. Not everyone is on board. Roxanne Meyer at MKM Partners slashed her price target from $52 to $40 in the wake of the meeting. Her reasoning, well, listen to this. While hypothetically there should be an attractive runway for sales and margin growth of both Jimmy Choo and Versace, some aspects of the strategy are easier to execute on, such as opening new stores, while others will take time and could yield mixed results, such as expanding handbags for Jimmy Choo, end quote. Mara continues, in the meantime, sales and margin stability may be tougher to come by at Michael Kors, given the tough wholesale environment, ongoing weakness in watches, and lack of stability in accessories, while it is an investment year in Versace. In other words, she thinks Capri is being fabulously optimistic. Investment year, always a bad sign. There are a lot of moving parts here, a lot of things that can go wrong, and neither Coors nor the Versace brands are in great shape at the moment. Oh, and I, I, I do expect no improvement in watches. I think she's right. That was once a very powerful segment, but again, competition from this has gutted the segment. I use, this is the one I've been using. The other day I used the one that was like Toy Story, 
Oh, that's the breaking news thing. Um, how about this one? It's like completely exposed. Anyway, by the way, I, I, I pressed the wrong button and music went off in a big meeting. All right, anyway, other analysts take a much more even keeled tone. Matthew Boss, the phenomenal retail analyst at JP Morgan, explained that the, that the company, it's in show me mode. Piper Jeffrey was guidedly optimistic, saying they believe management, but also acknowledged that the Michael Kors brand has some real problems, especially in luxury handbags. And some were extremely bullish, uh, like uh, Randall Koenig at Jeffries. Right after Capri's announcement, he published a report titled, Buy This Compelling Lux Brand Portfolio. His rationale? Well, he was willing to give management the benefit of the doubt. He says so himself. We believe management's financial targets are achievable and beatable. And with shares trading at less than seven times earnings, we urge investors to aggressively buy shares, end quote. Yep, he actually thinks Capri is being conservative with some of these targets. He sees an enormous opportunity for Versace in footwear and thinks Capri still has the potential to unlock major cost savings from its recent acquisitions. He describes Coors, Jimmy Choo, and Versace as powerful brands with high margins that can go higher. And if that's the case, Capri stock is indeed ridiculous. Ridiculously cheap. Okay, so where do I come down? Now, I do think that Jeffries is being a little too optimistic, but in general, you know what? I'm going to side with the bulls in this one. My reasoning is very simple. I like the risk reward here. I didn't like it higher, but here, even if the bears are right, I think that they'd already baked that into the stock. But if the bulls are right, Capri could have some spectacular upside. Easy call. Plus, as I, I, I add a bonus, I actually like management's vision. Capri is now a house of brands, and I really like that the Chinese consumer seems totally enamored of Versace. You know, when I was in Milan for, the, uh, for Fashion Week, well, I sure don't sound like Jim Cramer, but when I was in Milan for Fashion Week, what I, was, I went to the Versace, uh, geez, their showroom. Uh, the stuff was, was, you know, my wife didn't like it, but I thought it was kind of wild and crazy, which I like, bottom line. Capri Holdings has come down so far so fast since last September that when you see a split decision from the analyst community, I think you need to side with the bulls. The company finally has measurable goals that they can evaluate against, and they merely need to deliver on those targets for the stock to go much higher. Uh, a worst case, management drops the ball, and Capri continues to get a little lower valuation, and maybe an activist comes in and suggests some changes, too. I like that, too. Aaron in Kentucky. Aaron! Hey, Jim, big booyah from the bourbon capital of the world. How are you doing today? Well, you know what? I, I'm, a, I'm more of a Scotch guy, but I could go for bourbon uh, after the show with you. What's going on? I like it. So, hey, I'm an early 30s investor asking about Canada Goose. So, after the miss in revenue and lower guidance over the next three years, is it still a good long-term play at this price? Okay, I have, I have struggled mightily over what really happened there with Danny Reese. I thought Danny was just being conservative, and I agree with you. I think that a $4 billion valuation for Cannon Goose is too low. I am willing to say that Danny's going to deliver. He was not quarter to quarter. He told me I should think year to year. I am with you down here at 36. I'm saying, okay, Capri's come down so much that I think it's time to side with the bulls. Much more mad money ahead, of course, including the, the big bull market that you may be missing. I'm going to reveal it just ahead. I really like this one. Then the company with a futuristic weapon in the fight against diabetes, but also in the fight against Abbott, which is a really good company. I'm going to show you how, let's say, uh, how it's saving lives. And all your calls are rapid fire in tonight's edition of The Lightning Round. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get to jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.